Okay, so this will be part two of our video, sketching the derivative of a function. And in this video, we're gonna look at a quick example involving uh, position, velocity, and acceleration. So there's nothing gonna be different, th there will be nothing different in this video in a sense, other than we're just, uh, we're looking at our questions through the lens of this, of this physical setting of position, velocity, and acceleration. That's all we're doing. Okay, so maybe you've seen this. So in calculus, a lot of times we, we tend to use this S of T to represent the position of some object at some time T. So I'm just gonna use a particle. So I've got that S of T is gonna represent the position of a particle at time T. Well, if we think about the derivative of that, the rate of change in position, that's gonna be S prime of T. Well, our rate in change in position, that's what we call velocity. And likewise, notice if I take the derivative of velocity, which would therefore be the second derivative of position, that's gonna equal our acceleration. So again, the way I think about it, okay, our original function represents position, the derivative represents velocity, the second derivative represents acceleration. But to find, to pick out the graphs, we're really just gonna Again, view it through the same lens that we did our first examples. So it really doesn't matter, this context. We could kind of really just forget about it in a way, just knowing we're still just labeling a function, its derivative, and its second derivative. Okay, so I'm going to approach this question in the same way that I did the other ones. So I've got three graphs, uh, and I want to label one of them as position, one as velocity, and one as acceleration. So I'm going to highlight them at random. So we've got a line that has a negative slope. It looks like we have a curve that to me looks like a quadratic that's opening downwards. And then we have another line, but this line happens to be horizontal. So I've got three curves, and again, I want to label those. Now the way that I said I typically do these, if I have a curve that changes direction like this, I'm going to call it a quadratic. I'm assuming it's a quadratic. If I have a... a, a a graph that changes direction, right? My quadratic goes from increasing to decreasing. I like to pick on those, and the reason I like to pick on those is I look at the points at the top of the hills or the bottoms of the valleys. So here I've got a little top of a hill, and I know that the slope of the tangent line at that point, the slope of this line would be equal to zero. So I'm thinking, well, um, if this is my original function, I'm thinking if I make that my original function, which would be position, and let me even label that a little clearer. Let's use a, let's use the same color. So let's just say that that quadratic, if that were to be our position, let's see what would happen. Well, that means its derivative would have to equal zero at that point because that's the slope of the tangent line. But then that would mean that this curve, this line, right, that would have to be the derivative because it says the value of the derivative is equal to zero. So that means that the function who produced that derivative has a tangent line with a slope of zero. So this looks like, okay, I've got S of T labeled correctly. It looks like I've got S prime of T correctly. Uh, labeled correctly. Now, is, is it correct, I'm just thinking now, is it correct that this would be S double prime of T based on what I have so far? Well, let me compare S prime of T and S double prime of T. Those are the two I'm comparing. So I'm going to do the, th the same thing. I'm going to think about slopes of tangent lines, but now I'm going to think about the slope of the tangent line on S prime of T. Well, here's the point I'm looking at. Well, the slope of the tangent line would actually look the exact same thing as that, that line with negative slope. So again, this slope, I don't know what it is, but I know it's some negative number. So that means its derivative, which would be S double prime, that should have some negative value. But that's what's happening right here, right? If this is S double prime, notice since this is the x-axis, it says, yes, that y value is in fact negative. So now I think we are good to go. I think we have now labeled everything correctly. And I'm really just doing things that I've done previously. And again, let's just confirm that this makes sense. So if my quadratic <clears throat> is the, uh, we'll say the first function, it's the original function. 
Notice here, it's um, the slope of its tangent line would be some positive number. I don't know what it is. Well, here's the derivative. Again, we said the line was the derivative. And notice its y value is positive, so that's good. But we know the slope of this tangent line, again, is negative. And that's what the uh, second derivative says. It says the second derivative is negative. And we looked at the top. Let's look at some points on the right side, and then I think we will be finished here. So again, if I look at this quadratic, if I look at this tangent line, notice the slope of that tangent line. Again, I don't know what it equals, but I know it's some negative number. That means its derivative should have a negative value. That means its derivative should have a negative value. And in fact, it does. And this is where we would have to be careful, right? Because now both of these have negative values. So in this case, I would have to be a little more careful about my reasoning. But I think, again, we could conclude that this would have to be the first derivative. Because again, its, its derivative would have to be negative, which is in fact correct. Notice it wouldn't make sense. Suppose we did incorrectly. Suppose I said that the horizontal line was s prime. Well, its derivative should equal 0, right? Its derivative should equal 0 because of the slope of the tangent line there is 0. So therefore, this curve wouldn't work because its y value is negative. So that indicates a tangent line with negative slope. OK, so a lot to think about here. Um, but again, I'm just going through it the same way we did the other ones. And there is a little more guesswork in these, I would say. So they're not certainly not as mechanical. So they may take you an extra second. But again, typically I look for, just like I said, to give me a starting point, I, I look for places where the tangent lines are equal to zero. That was a place. Here's a place right beneath it where there's an x-intercept. So I know that these two functions, right, I know at least that this curvy function and this other uh, linear function, I know that those are related. That curvy function must be uh, sort of the original function and the, the, the other, in this case, this linear function would have to be its derivative. That's the only thing that makes sense. So in that case, at least now I have it narrowed down to two. The question to me would be sort of, you know, where does that horizontal line now fit into the picture? And okay, by looking at a couple different tangent lines, we were able to deduce to deduce that, um, um, you know, what the correct labeling in fact was. And there it was. All right, so I hope this example makes some sense. Again, you're just doing the exact same thing. It's just in the physical setting of position, velocity, and acceleration.